Hi Barbie. All right, we're not talking about that movie today, but we are gonna talk about book to movie adaptations that I'm so excited about. And I wanna let you know all about them so you have time to buy the book, read it, get ready, and have bragging rights that you read the book before the movie came out. So here's a short list of book to movie adaptations that are releasing the second half of the year. Starting with Red, White, and Royal Blue. Oh my gosh. I read this book for the romance challenge in February. I really went into it blind. I felt like some of my prejudices came out because I saw the cover and I just thought it was going to be like a popper and a royal type of relationship, like a guy specifically from England falling in love with an American girl who's not royal at all. Little did I know it's LGBTQ and it focuses on Alex who is the first woman president son of the United States of America and Henry who is the prince of England. Neither can be openly gay and they're actually secretly rivals. They freaking hate each other and now they're forced to be together after a disastrous event that happened at a wedding. Now they're making a movie that's releasing August 11th and it's gonna be on Prime. Now I've seen some trailers posted or people just chattering about it on Bookstagram but I haven't seen the full thing so I'm hoping we get to do that together here okay let's start with this first one i sent you to the royal wedding simple instructions oh, this is the event that i was talking about don't cause an international incident how's it going you've I love done some alex. pretty stupid things in your day but this thanks the cake alex is a super troublemaker henry shoved me <laughs> an urge i currently share what i need accent, is some though. good old-fashioned damage control <laughs> That accent's supposed to be Texan. I don't know about this. <laughs> You've got to be joking. You can hate Prince Henry all you want. My idea is bigger than yours. I want you to know that. You're wearing lifts. You know that too, sweetheart. Hanging out with this guy. Aw, it's a hospital scene. We're not to see each other again. You're expected at my New Year's party. Who you'd be if you were an anonymous oh, person. Oh, the, the snow world. scene. No oh, it's so good under the tree. As thick as it gets. Oh. I'm so excited for this karaoke scene too. Majesty. It's your royal highness. What I really want. It is very saucy. The book is very saucy, which is not something I expected in general. I don't really love smutty books in general. Ever about him? Do you love him? What difference would it make if I did? I want someone to love. Prince Henry belongs to Britain. I need. We can figure out a way to love each other on our own terms. It's pulling me it is quite sentimental too. That's funny. Okay, just some initial thoughts. I hope Henry is more of that uptight character that we see that eventually opens up. And Alex, I think, is way goofier, but this is just the trailer, so I'm really excited to see what they actually made in this adaptation. I don't know about that accent though. The first woman president we have in this world is from Texas and she's very proudly Texan. I don't know how I feel about that accent. I feel like I've heard actors do a better job of it. I don't know, but I guess we're gonna see. It looks freaking fun, and honestly, that whole book made me laugh so hard. The friendships, I freaking loved all the friendships in the book. It is quite spicy, like the trailer kind of hints at and shows and I, if i'm correct this movie is actually rated r probably for those spicy scenes i am not a smut lover or a spicy lover who reads really graphic things or even likes watching things that has a lot of like sexual content in it so that's something i really didn't like about the book and probably won't like about the adaptation in general but that's a me preference overall i think it's really fun and i definitely recommend the book if you want to know even more about it you can see it highlighted in my romance challenge that i did for this channel okay this next book is actually recommended to me by a really good friend i'm hoping to read some true crime soon because i just like bringing a variety of genres here and she recommended killers of the flower moon it is a true crime novel that focuses on an indigenous community that's actually very wealthy and one by one people in this community or this family start disappearing 
and dying. And so the book is told from a real life FBI agent that got on this case and ended up discovering this huge American conspiracy. I was told it is a stunning tale and a very important one at that. And well, little did I know, but it's actually becoming a film and it's coming out October 6th of this year. It actually stars Leonardo DiCaprio as this agent. I don't even know if there's a trailer yet, so we're gonna Google it a little bit and see if we can find one. Oh. Yep, there is a trailer. I would be surprised if there wasn't. I feel like a lot of these things are being overshadowed by Barbie and Oppenheimer that I'm actually very excited for both, but this looks just freaking amazing, the book in general. And I wanna read the book before the movie comes out, so that's why I'm also suggesting it to all of you so you can also read it before the movie. So let's watch the trailer. There's a Borleo. You know, you got, you got nice color skin. What color would you say that oh, is? Oh gosh. My color. The amount of times I've heard that before. Who says they have the worst land possible? Mm -hmm. But they outsmarted everybody. As they should. The land had oil on it. Black gold. Good the for money them. Flows freely here now. I do love that money, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Their time is over. I don't know what their time is over means. I it's going to be another tragedy. Hmm. When this money started coming, we should have known it came with something else. Yeah. Why are people so greedy, man? They're like buzzards circling our people. Ooh, looks like there's hella action here. This obviously looks way more traumatized than I think the novel would be. <laughs> Yep, this October. I am right here. Was this a love story too? You've got to take back control of your home. I was uh, sent down from Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. to see about these murders. See what about them? See who's doing it. Good. Okay, so now I don't know if Leo is the agent or not. He might be the villain here. Expecting a miracle to make all this go away. You know they don't happen anymore. Yes. And they kept the original title too, which is cool. Now, I don't know if this is true, but I see uh, some of the comments saying that these are real indigenous dancers and that they actually had some actual indigenous people on this, which I'm really glad, you know, that we're no longer doing the thing where we're basically grabbing white actors to play BIPOC characters that are very obviously from these communities, you know, like stories from these communities and members of these communities. And instead of getting actors from those communities, they just, you know, hire Tom Cruise or something. It looks like they have some really amazing actors on here. I am really curious what they're actually gonna keep in the adaptation because that looks very dramatic and I don't know if that's just the way it's filmed, but those were real events, or if they dramatized it more and it's based off of the true crime novel. So this is another reason I just love reading the book before watching the movie or the film and you can treat it as separate forms of art if you want or maybe they make something else different but in this case because it's a true crime and it has to do with this indigenous community that was being wiped and murdered and it has a whole conspiracy behind it i really hope that they stick true to the story and show us really what happened and what the novel says and explains so i'm really excited to read that one and then compare it to the film and see how i feel about it october 13th on apple tv we're gonna have lessons in chemistry y'all i have a lot of mixed feelings about lessons in chemistry it is featured in one of my wrap-ups. I think I gave it like a three star or like two point something star rating because the themes pretty much failed in my eyes in this book. It does talk about like feminism and it focuses on Elizabeth Zott who is living in the 50s and as we know women in the 50s were really really poorly treated. We still have a long way to go but it definitely highlights how far we've come. Now the narrator of the story actually knows what everyone is thinking. It made it a very unique book. I, it made me laugh at times mainly because their dog 630 has a narrative of his own in this book as well and he's really funny. However the author 
author really puts Elizabeth Zott, our MC, through a lot of trauma and does not process or break down or unravel any of those things that happen to her. At first I thought, you know, this is the 50s, you know, mental health and, and working through trauma isn't really a thing. So I'm gonna give the author the benefit of the doubt that Elizabeth Zott is on survival mode and just has to go, go, go. However, it continues and there are things that are very graphically described in this book that I don't really see a lot of reviewers talking about. So I just wanna make sure that you as my viewer know that Lessons in Chemistry has a very graphic scene right in the beginning of the book and also toward the end of the book and then sprinkled throughout the book are just really upsetting events that happen to Elizabeth Zott. Not as graphic, but still really upsetting. Really think about what you can handle and if this is a book you want to read. However, I could easily see how this would be a really fun TV show because in the book, Elizabeth Zott ends up having her own TV show as a cook, but really she's empowering women and showing off how she's a chemist at heart. It looks really fun and I noticed there was a trailer for this and it's coming out and I am actually very curious about it. Even if the book wasn't my most favorite, it looks really fun. I think it's gonna be really well done and the actress they got for Elizabeth Zott looks really on point. So I have a feeling the adaptation might end up being better in a way. So we're officially gonna take a look at that because I have not seen the trailer. I just know it exists and I know it's been announced. Okay, so, so far all I see is a teaser trailer, like not an actual trailer, so. Wham, reap up, boom, bam, I can sing. May I join you? You may. Wham. You're one of the smartest people in this lab. You hungry little fella? Oh, is yes, that 6.30? I, I guess I didn't picture him as like a poodle. If I can or a golden doodle. You can too. Welcome viewers. My name is Elizabeth Zott, and this is Supper at Six. Wow. This is, <laughs> this is so short and cute, but... So it's very clear, it looks like it's gonna be a TV show. There's gonna be episodes, a whole deal there. I had fun moments throughout the book when she was speaking to the audience because she was really speaking to housewives watching Supper at Six, which is her TV show. And those moments were really empowering. I will say it does have kind of a happily ever after feel to it, which just didn't feel as realistic. And again, she doesn't even walk her readers through all the trauma that the MC went through. So I understand if maybe the MC doesn't have time to process all of those things that happen, but to not even let your reader journey through this with the MC was a problem for me. Overall though, I thought it was definitely unique. It was really different in the way that it was written and 630 is the real hero of the story and I can't wait to see how they're gonna write about the dog. How are they gonna present 630 on the TV show? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Finally, November 17th, we have The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes and Oh my God, I am so freaking excited for this one because The Hunger Games, I freaking love The Hunger Games. And then when the movies came out, I thought they were awesome. I know, I know, don't come at me. There are definitely some problems in there. Like they could have really showcased PETA a lot more. They could have definitely done more with Joanna and broken our hearts even more with Finnick. There's a lot in there that we could have seen more of, but I think it does a pretty great job for book to movie adaptation, especially when the books are just insane not to mention they're way more violent than the movies really portrayed and i don't know how you could have made that movie pg-13 if you directly went from the book to the movie but now we have the prequel coming out which focuses on snow president snow and his basically his villain story his back story this was one of my top reads of 2022 i loved it so much because for a long time i just wasn't reading i was deep in working with a lot of students and populations that need a lot of help and resources and the stories are really heavy so I wasn't really reading I wasn't in the mood to read the dystopian novels I love so much for obvious reasons but once I switched fields and I got back into reading Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes was the very first book I binged so hard again launched me right back into the bookish world I really started my bookstagram and now I'm here talking to you so I really love this book I thought it was so good the only reason I've seen people give it really low ratings is because big surprise snow is actually evil and that doesn't make any sense to me if you've read the hunger games or if you've even watched the hunger games you know that 74th hunger games snow is the villain he is the ultimate villain he is the president of the 
capital where all the bad things happen. So for you to walk into his story, his villain story, and expect Snow to come out looking good is kind of ridiculous because then it wouldn't answer our question of how he became that way, or in this case, was he always that way. There are a lot of surprises that come out in the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes and I loved every bit of it. There's still music in there, there's a connection to Katniss, there's a connection to District 12. The real reason why he hated Katniss so much, so much deeper than what we see in The Hunger Games, so I'm so excited. Definitely read it, do it, read it, it's so good. Now. I am surprised I haven't seen the full trailer either because I have been reposting a lot of what the official Instagram has been posting, which is basically behind the scenes shots. But there are a lot of people that I noticed compared a couple of things to our beloved Lucy Gray, who is one of the MCs of A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, to our dear Katniss. So I can't wait to see the full trailer with the music and everything. I loved it so much. It was such a rush. I had some people live texting me through bookstagram as they were reading this book and they could not believe that ending. I convinced some close friends to finally pick up the book and read it and we are so excited for this movie to come out. Okay, here we go. Yes, Hunger Game time. Like fall season is like the Hunger Game season, in my opinion. Here we go. I am honored to introduce <gasps> There's the academy the where Snow is. Dean Casca. Yes, yeah, so this is, I think, the tenth year of the Hunger Games. I have summoned you all here for the so it's very early on. In which we choose two children. Everything looked different. The reaping, none of it was like it is in Hunger Games. Well, Lucy Gray Ooh, Bear. There's the bow, there's the bow I'm talking about. Lucy Gray does that Katniss there has does been too. A change this year. As a mentor, Mr. Snow, your role is to turn these children into spectacles, not survivors. What does my mentor do besides bring me roses? I do oh, I love Lucy Gray. I can't wait for us to see you her really on want screen. To take care of me in that arena. Start by thinking I can actually win. I'm Lucky Flickerman, Ooh. first ever host of Who the Who remembers Games. Flickerman? Oh, Here he is. is. This is his first time hosting. He actually becomes the host for the very first time in this Hunger Game. Enjoy the show. I so can't wait. What happens in there? Fueled with the terror of becoming prey. See how quickly we become predator? See how quickly civilization disappears? She's right though, she's speaking facts even though she's creepy. Hmm. It's built into us all. Okay, this... <laughs> This still where Snow looking like a Backstreet Boy, I'm not sure about, but we'll see. You hear that, boy? It's the sound of snow. Falling. Falling. I remember this one in the freaking books. How wonderful that we all get to be here Aww. for someone's final performance. The monsters! All of you! Facts. We have some very interesting characters in the prequel. There's the capital before we really know it. It's the things we love most that destroy Did us. you hear that? <gasps> that was old Snow's like 74th Hunger Games Snow that talk. <gasps> Dude, what a nice touch. Okay, that was the first time I fully saw the trailer. I am a little bit fangirling right now. I'm so freaking excited. I can't believe they threw in older Snow's voice in their voice over the, what was it? Part where he says it's the things that we love most that destroy us because I feel like that's really the thesis of Snow's life in the prequel, like what he actually comes out learning, which is really tragic and awful, but explains why he is the way he is for the next 60 something years until he meets Katniss, who may or may not remind him a lot of Lucy Gray. This specific book takes place post-Civil War because there was a civil war that happened between the districts and the capital. It was gruesome, it was awful, and we, as we know, the districts lost. So now Snow is recounting all the ways they had to survive in the capital. And in the book, we can see the obvious hatred that Snow carries against the district because he blames them for, well, rebelling and for standing up against the capital and making his family suffer and starve and really it just shows you once again that war is not pretty war is not glorious war is not good 
right? So it shows all of that from his perspective. And the Hunger Games are not what they are by the time Katniss gets there quite yet. Right now, it's in early developments. That's why that one Dean is telling Snow that he is going to be a mentor for the first time. And his mentee happens to come from District 12. So it's such a good book. I super recommend it. There are a lot of things in there that will click in your brain and you'll realize like, oh, that's why in the Hunger Games this or that's why they... It was just great. I freaking loved it. I don't care what anyone says. It's really good. Highly recommend it and cannot wait for this film to come out, especially if they sprinkle a little bit of the snow we know, the snow we were first introduced to. Now, on that high note, those are all the adaptations I'm currently excited about that I've heard about and books that I've loved or can't wait to read. And I hope that you get to before the book or movie adaptation comes out. Let me know if you're going to pick up any of these books or if you're excited about any of the adaptations. If you enjoyed hanging out with me. I hope you will hit the subscribe button and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye!